Hi, I'm Sheila Ray Gregoire from To Love, Honor, and Vacuum. And today, I thought instead of writing a blog post, I would videotape a blog post. So here's my question. Do you feel really alone in your marriage? I know a lot of my readers do. I write on my blog about how to build intimacy in marriage, how to make marriage fun, how to overcome difficulties, and many of you have read that and it's just making you feel worse because you so desperately want to build a great marriage and yet you're married to someone who doesn't seem to care. I've received two emails this week that are just weighing really heavily on my heart. One is from a woman whose husband comes home from work every day and then goes directly to the computer and spends hours looking at porn and he thinks there's nothing wrong with it. Another is from a woman whose husband has given her the silent treatment for 30 days, hasn't even acknowledged her presence and won't tell her why. If you are in a marriage like that, you probably feel so devastated and so alone. Here are just a few of my thoughts. First of all, let me just reassure you that just because your marriage is terrible right now does not mean it always will be. Um, there's a great study in the case for marriage, uh, a book by Linda Waite and Maggie Gallagher, which found that 78% of women who said that their marriages were just awful on a one to eight scale, they said they were like a seven or an eight, five years later rated them as a one or a two. So even if your marriage is in the toilet right now, it isn't necessarily time to flush it. Sometimes just waiting it out, God can do a amazing things. But maybe you've been in that situation where you've been trying to wait it out and you've been giving it years and you've been giving it so many tears. Now what do you do? Two more thoughts. First of all, you need to find a good church. Surround yourself with people who can build you up. That doesn't mean you tell everybody your problems. Please do not tell 15 people all of your marriage problems and then ask them for advice. Instead, identify one or two really good mentors who you can tell everything to and who can pray and lead you through your decisions that you need to make. Secondly, get a hold of James Dobson's book, Love Must Be Tough. It's one of the best books I've read for situations like this. He wrote it specifically um, for people whose spouses are having affairs. So what do you do when you want to save the marriage and your spouse is having an affair? But I think it applies for all kinds of situations when your spouse is doing something which is directly endangering the marriage. And his philosophy is you do not be a doormat. Instead, you let your spouse feel the repercussions of their actions because it's only when they feel the consequences that they may indeed change. So it's learning how to stop being that doormat and how to change the dynamics in your relationship so that your spouse feels the need and the impetus to change. That's how you save a marriage. So that's what you do. Find a good church, find some mentors, do a lot of prayer and get a hold of that book. You won't be able to change this marriage yourself, but you can with God's help and you can by upsetting the dynamic in your marriage. Remember too, that if that marriage doesn't work, if he leaves, if it just can't be saved, even though God hates divorce, he loves you. And you can never do anything, you can never do anything that will make God stop loving you.